Hey there. Today I'm going to talk about nib sizes because someone put a comment to one of my videos and the person wrote what size nib would you recommend to someone trying to improve their cramped handwriting over a large period of time? My sister insisted on me buying the same six pound Parker as yourself because my mum was paying so I wish to upgrade soon. Well, first of all you got other people to pay for your pens. That's a, a very, very good endeavor. I would really recommend that. But apparently you are now willing to, to switch your pens. And when you talk about a, a, a six pound Parker pen, I take it you were referring to this. I think that's the Parker Vector. And at least this is the old one. I think there is a newer one right now. In any case, um, this is definitely a nice pen to start. I agree with that, but you really have to move on because this is this will simply not give you the full writing pleasure a, a more expensive, even a slightly more expensive fountain pen is going to give you. So if you were talking about this, then you're absolutely right. You, you should really move a step up. Okay, your question is difficult to answer, and it's difficult to answer for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that I don't know your handwriting, but you mention the fact that uh, your handwriting is cramped. So I take it that you have a, a small hand, so to speak, when you write. Well, that's, that's interesting, that's good to know. Um, another issue is that what is, for instance, a medium nib for one manufacturer can be a broader nib, I won't say a full-fledged broad nib, but a broader nib in another manufacturer's nibs. Because nib sizes do vary a little, do vary a little bit, and, and that's uh, always a bit of a problem. Now, uh, what I'm going to do to help you decide is I'll show you the writing of a number of pens in a minute. So what I'm going... now, wait, let me first talk some more about this. Um, I think if you have small handwriting, you would be well off with either a fine or a medium nib. Some brands also offer nibs that are extra fine or extra extra fine. I've even seen that once. Um, that's interesting, but that's really suitable for people who have really, really small handwriting. I remember one guy at my high school. Uh, uh, and our math teacher always referred to him as Mr. Micro because he had such a small handwriting that it was almost illegible. Well, if that's the case, then you would really like to use an extra, extra fine or even an extra fine uh, nib. If your handwriting is just small, I would say go for a fine nib. However, generally speaking, the broader the nib, the more ink will flow out, and in my experience, the smoother the writing experience. Clearly, that will also depend on the material the nib is made of. Is it a 14 karat gold nib? Is it just a stainless steel nib? Uh, some stainless steel nibs are really smooth, by the way, so it's, it's no guarantee whatsoever, but the nib material clearly influences the smoothness of the nib, and so does the paper. If you have the most beautiful nib you could find, and you have really poor, uh, you know, rough paper, then your writing is not going to be smooth. So, that's an issue. Uh, so again, I would say if you have small handwriting, fine nib or a medium nib, but a fine nib may have a slightly worse flow than a medium nib. And as a result, uh, the flow is not as good and the writing will not be as smooth as with a medium nib. Is that a big issue? Well, it can be an issue. If you have a small handwriting, I would steer clear of broad nibs because broad nibs really work best when you have a bold hand. And if you write in a very small way, then a broad nib is going to make your reading illegible. I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. So that's pretty much the advice I can give you. Go for a, I would say, medium-priced fountain pen. I did a video on how to choose a first fountain pen, things to beware of. So maybe you want to check that out. 
I'm just shamelessly plugging my other videos here. Um, but I mean, apart from that, I'd really say find a medium. I think in general, that's a good way to start. The first pen, I mean, this slightly more expensive pen that I bought was a medium because I simply did not know what to expect. And with medium, it's medium, right? It's neither broad nor fine, so I think you will be fine. So perhaps go for a medium, and if your handwriting is really small, check out a fine. Okay, so what am I going to do next? What I'm going to do next is I'll show you a fairly extensive writing sample using different pens. And I'll just go through the pens here very briefly so that you know what I'm talking about and, you know, what you can expect. After the writing video, I will upload some stills, some close-ups, photographs of the writing so that you can really compare it and compare different nib sizes. And I hope that will help you out. Let's take a look at the pens I will use. First of all, a Namiki Falcon. Namiki, as you can probably hear, is a Japanese brand. And generally speaking, Japanese nibs are finer than Western nibs. So I got this with a fine nib, uh, and this is actually, it actually says SF, so I think that means super fine. Um, this is finer than a fine nib of, say, Parker or Waterman. So that should give you an idea of what is meant by an extra fine nib. This is also a semi-flex nib, which means if you add more pressure, the tines of the nib will open up and you will get a broader line. But in the writing sample I've done, I've applied no pressure, so it's really a very fine line. The next pen is a Waterman Hemisphere. I have a few fine nibs, but I think this is characteristic of what you could expect in a fine nib. So, um, it's fine. It's a stainless steel nib, that's, that's not that much to this uh, pen. It's fairly smooth. So this, I think, will give you a nice view of, of a fine nib. Visconti Opera Elements. This is a medium nib, but it is slightly broad-ish. It is on the broader side of the medium spectrum, I think. So, just so you know what you can expect. This is 14 karat. It is a bit soft. That means that this too opens up a little. It is slightly springy, but again, in the writing sample, I've applied no pressure, so that should give you an idea of a broader medium nib. The Yardelet Retro Grand. This too is a medium nib. I wanted to give you an overview of several medium nibs to show you that between brands, the nib width actually varies. So, what is medium in one brand? can be, well, maybe not broad, but broader in another brand. I want you to beware of that. Lamy uh, Nex M88 or M88 Nex or 88 M Nex or whatever. Um, let's call it the Lamy Nex. Uh, this is a medium nib. So, although it doesn't look particularly broad, actually this too is a bit broader than I expected it to be. Then, Faber-Castell Emotion Croco. This is a broad nib, so this will give a wider line, and I think you're definitely going to notice that if you compare this to the mediums, and most definitely if you compare it to the fine nibs. This is stainless steel, but it's a very smooth nib. These are more expensive pens, by the way. But this Lamy was 20 euros. So that's not too expensive. Just, I mean, if you're shopping for your first pen, you're probably not going to spend 200 euros on a pen. Um, at least I, I assume you will not be doing that. So just to make sure, these are some, perhaps some more expensive pens, but they really demonstrate the point of the nib sizes. So that's why I chose them. Finally, I have this Pelican, the Pelican M205 Jewel. Uh, this is special because this is a double broad nib. Um, it was made for highlighting. I have a video on that, but you can also use it with regular ink, which I did here. And this is double broad, so that's a, a pretty wide line, but actually it wasn't as broad as I would expect it to be. So that too can be instructive. 
Finally, there are pens that have more specialized nibs. Italic nibs, oblique nibs, that kind of thing. Forget about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're shopping for your, your, your first or you know, second, your, your, your first real big pen, um, don't go for the oblique nibs. I have only one, so I'm definitely not an expert, but oblique nibs take a little bit of getting used to, and you need to learn how to write with them. Whereas with the standard rounded nibs, you get standard fountain pens, you know, with the little round things. Um, oh, that's really vague, the little round things. I mean, this nib is rounded off, right? And an oblique nib is cut off like that. So if you move like this, then you get a broad line. But if you move like this, then you get a very fine line. That's very interesting, but it's it's a bit more difficult to use. So I wouldn't I wouldn't get one of those. And if you're worried about accidentally getting one, you, you will not. It's very difficult to, to buy a pen that costs uh, as much as this pen and accidentally getting an oblique nib. That's a bit more exclusive if you want. So um, don't 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 worry about that. So oblique nibs, italic nibs, they're most likely interesting, but don't don't get those for your first pen. I would not recommend that. So I would say on to the writing samples, then on to the stills to show you some more high-res pictures of the writing samples, and um, that's it. So uh, I'll see you later. Okay, so different nib sizes. Uh, what I would like to do is give you a brief demonstration of various nib sizes. And I'll just go through the pens I'll use. Uh, let's start with a Namiki Falcon. This is a fine nib, but because it's Japanese, what is called fine in this case is closer to what would be an extra fine nib on Western pens. After that, I will show you this Waterman Hemisphere, which is a fine nib. Then the Visconti Opera Elements. This is a medium nib. The Yarder Lead Retro Grand. This is also a medium nib. Lamy Nex M88. This is also a medium nib. I want to show you three medium nibs so that you can get a bit of a taste of the line variation uh, that's actually well that, that characterizes these medium nibs because what is medium in one brand can actually be on the broad side for another brand then I will show you this Faber Castell Emotion Croco which is a broad nib and finally a Pe Pelican M205 Duo which is a double broad nib so let's start um, the um, Namiki Falcon, so this is extra fine. Officially it is fine, but as I just said, it's, it's Asian, so it's an extra fine nib. Uh, this is a bit flexy, but I will just apply no pressure, so that you can really see the, the extremely fine line. Etc. So this will really give you very, very fine lines. Now what I'll also do is I will upload a photograph of the writing in a high resolution so that you can just compare line width at the end of this uh, video. So that was extra fine. Let's, let's say it was extra fine. Now we have fine. I'm sorry about the different ink colors, but I had most of these pens inked up already. I didn't want to uh, sort of throw out the inks and then ink them up in the same color. But of course, that can the color of the ink can make certain nibs seem a bit wider than they usually are. But okay, bear with me. So again, this is fine. You may see a little bit of a difference with this Namiki fine, which is even thinner. I will do a comparison of different lines uh, in a minute. Then we have the Visconti Opera Elements. This is medium. 
Again, I will not apply pressure. This too is a slightly flexy nib. So this is really what you get if you apply no pressure. Then we have the Yarder Lead Retro Grand, another medium nib. We have the um, Lamy Nex, that too is medium. Faber Castell. Emotion. This is broad. And finally, I have to move the camera a little bit. The Pelican M205. This is double broad. So, again, I'll make a picture of this so that you can really compare the different line widths in at your leisure. Um, let's let's take a look at different uh, comparisons of lines directly. So we will start with the um, the Miki Falcon. No pressure. Let's call it extra fine. The Waterman, fine. Visconti, medium. Yard of lead, medium. Whoops. Knocking over the camera. Accident. <clears throat> Ultra professional setup check. Okay. The Lamy, medium, the Faber Castell broad, and the Pelican double broad. So there's quite some variation going on here. Extra fine. Medium. Uh, sorry. That's fine. I mean it wasn't fine, it wasn't it was a mistake, but I mean the line, the the, the nib width is fine. Medium Yard lead medium Lamy medium Faber Castell, broad. Here you really start to see a variation, I think. 
and the pelican. I'm well. I was applying a bit much pressure there, so that's no pressure. Double broad. Now, if you compare that, to this. you'll see a difference. Then again, if you compare this to this, to this, then you will see that there's even some variation between medium nibs of different brands. And that is, of course, a big problem, because that makes it difficult to estimate what you'll get. I hope that this clarifies the different nib sizes. And I hope that you will see that, for instance, when you have a look at the Visconti, let me use an extra fine nib to point that out. If you take a look at this Visconti medium line, you will see it's, at least to my eye, it appears to be a little bit broader than the Yada Lead medium line. And it most definitely, I think, is broader than the Lamy line, at least in this uh, figure. When drawing vertical lines, things may be a little bit different. Uh, the nib, the, the tines of the nib tend to open up more with horizontal lines than with vertical lines under pressure. So that's something you have to take into account. But in general, I think this will give you an interesting table. Now, by no means this is definite. I mean, as I just said, different brands will give you different uh, nib widths. Uh, so medium for one brand is not the same as medium for another brand. But nevertheless, I hope this will uh, give you some insights. Now, what I would like to do is show you something. Let's turn to an all-new page. Now you can imagine that if you have a very small spidery handwriting, which I actually don't, but let's imagine I had, imagine that's your hand. This is an extra fine nib, so that's no problem. But if you were to buy a double broad nib and try to write in that size you will probably see that this gets illegible you cannot read this but there's no problems reading that now if it's the other way around if you have a bold hand that's more to my liking etc. and you use a double broad nib then that's no problem. If you were to use an extra fine nib for that then that looks a bit weird, right? In other words, recommending a nib is difficult because it will really depend on your handwriting. If you make big letters, then get a wider nib. If your handwriting is small and spidery, then you should try to go for a more fine nib. And if you don't know, if you just don't know what would fit your handwriting, you'll have to experiment. And then I suggest you just start out with a not too expensive pen with a medium nib, because medium is medium, right? It's just, it's not too fine, it's not too broad, you can probably use that anyway. So, this is my, my Lamy Nex, with a medium nib. Um, it's not that expensive a pen, but it's still nice. If you have a small spidery handwriting, then you can read it, if you write it with a medium nib. If you've got big hand, a big hand in writing,
then you can read it too. So if you're going to buy your first pen, then what I recommend is you get a medium nib. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I will upload some stills of the writing and especially of the previous page with all the different line comparisons so that you can, uh, you know, just pause the video and, and check it out at your leisure. And um, that's pretty much it. So um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.